Hello YouTube, it's Shadow Hero 90. In this episode of Shadow Reviews, I'm going to be reviewing Batman Ninja, the second anime Batman film, but the first to get a direct sequel where its predecessor, Batman Gotham Knights, failed because it was basically just Batman in anime style, Batman Ninja succeeds by essential... well, probably because the people who worked on the movie outside of the English dub uh, were Japanese. Putting this on par with, um, oh, I'd say the anime adaptation, well, adaptations of Pokemon, Android Kikider, and Ultraman. The only difference, uh, being is that... These are American characters adapted through a Japanese medium, where the examples I just gave were Japanese were live action Japanese characters that were adapted into anime. The plot of this movie is fucking awesome. Batman tracks Gorilla Grodd to Arkham Asylum, where Grodd was testing... Well, he had this whole time travel plan set up. But when Batman interfered, he, Batman, a ton of the Dark Knight's allies, as well as some familiar faces locked up in Arkham Asylum were sent back in time to feudal Japan. The Dark Knight then arrives two years later in an in a in essentially a altered timeline where the Joker had taken over Japan and told all these samurai to kill Batman. Now, the Dark Knight has to essentially run the gauntlet against not only some of the Arkham Rogues, but, th but a couple of villains that usually aren't, are not his villains. I really like these, um, I'd say two and a half second title cards they'd use to introduce characters or new forms of characters or, well, by new forms of characters, I mean the somewhat evolution-based character arc Batman goes through in this movie. And I really gotta say, yes, this feels like something more fitting for a video game that may or may not be released outside of Japan, but this works here. I really do like it. The Batmobile in this universe is dark, but unbelievably futuristic and high-tech. As was the miniature Batwing that ejected out of the Batmobile. And this universe's Bat-Cycle that transforms into an armored mech suit. I kind of think these designs were meant to pay homage to 
science fiction or more or less giant robot anime such as The Big O in particular, Gundam, Overman King Gainer, and Robotech. The Joker even goes so far as to have his um, castle converted into a clockwork doll styled wooden giant mecha, which could easily be a slight homage to the anime Clockwork Warriors. Another great thing about this movie is that it shows Batman's immense level of character. He sees who he thinks is a woman and her child in danger as the Joker basically uses this scenario as bait to get Batman to save her which leads him into a fight with Bane, and the fact that the child was fake and the woman was Harley Quinn in disguise. It seems like Batman has been defeated after Harley Quinn smacked him with that giant mallet of hers, and the Joker taunts him about that. And suddenly, out of nowhere, this swarm of bats swoop in and strike the Joker, Harley Quinn, and the samurai who are working for the Joker. And then, these bat ninjas, who are exclusive to this reality, emerge from the swarm of bats. This ninja clan is something that... This movie seriously did right. They're basically a group of ninjas who believe in the prophecy, a prophecy about this bat god. And in other words, this movie literally made Batman the Messiah. Yeah, and here's the thing. If this were a cartoon... This whole scenario would be a complete fake-out. It would either be a misunderstanding or a hoax and Batman was actually hooked up to a virtual reality machine or Batman tells them they've got it all wrong and he's not their god. But no, the leader of the ninja clan actually, in his words, makes it clear he knows what's going on. He knows Batman's from the future, but he also knows that Batman is their messiah. The shinobi from across the sea, the metaphorical sea of time, as he put it. Now, if this were any other universe, this whole thing would be played off as a coincidence. But it's not. And the only, it's the only flaw with the movie, but the reason that Batman doesn't embrace the whole Lord Batman, Messiah of the Bat Clan thing, is because the writers wanted Batman to go through, well, to have an actual arc. Like every other shonen protagonist who is not the same at the end of the show as he is at the beginning, like Goku or Naruto Uzumaki, for instance. And that's the only thing uh, that I can fault this movie on, as 
Superheroes are static characters. They usually don't go through arcs. Because, uh, since Batman is getting an arc, Bruce Wayne is going to feel that Batman would be nothing without his gadgets, despite having... Well, despite knowing every fighting style known to man, which drives him to accept an alliance with Gorilla Grodd, that leads to him getting backstabbed by both Grodd and Catwoman. Right before the final climactic battle between Batman and the Joker, they actually give Gorilla Grodd a redemption arc, because that's actually common in Japanese anime. Robin gets a pet monkey during this film, and I guess that was kind of the catalyst for Gorilla Grodd giving him the flute he uses to control his army of monkeys. I know he wants Batman to avenge him, but yeah, this kind of does look like Gorilla Grodd did one good deed right before he died. Which he technically did. He gave the good guys an army to fight the Joker's clockwork doll-like giant robot. The monkey army was able to form a giant by combining all their bodies and strike down the Joker's wooden mech, allowing the heroes to storm it. Robin left control of the monkey army to his pet monkey and the pet monkey's girlfriend, as the Joker and Harley Quinn basically try to roast the heroes with a flamethrower, and then suddenly all these bats come flying in out of nowhere, and the Bat Clan with them. Then the bats cover the monkey army, and basically form a new incarnation of the legendary Bat God that this ninja tribe worships. I also really like how they made him look almost identical to Batman during his first appearance in Detective Comics issue 27. And as the heroes are storming Joker's wooden mech, the Bat God, or in this case the secondary Bat God, beats the ever-loving crap out of it. Just before the big climactic Batman vs. Joker fight, the Joker reveals that, yes, Red Hood did encounter him and Harley, and they had no memory of who they were. They were basically working as farmers, and this is something that's completely in line with the Joker's character. The only way to get the upper hand was to hypnotize himself and basically erase his memory because if he didn't, Batman would have spotted him from a mile away. He literally had to become someone else to hide from Batman. Okay, here's what I have to say about the final climactic battle of the movie between Batman and the Joker. 1. The choreography was fucking awesome. I mean, this was on par, this was on par with real anime 
as well as the Star Wars prequel movies and the Star Wars sequel trilogy. In fact, now that I make the comparison, this fight was is better than all the fights in the Star Wars prequel trilogy. Hell, it's better than every fight in the entire Star Wars franchise. Two, the fact that Joker mocks Batman's moral compass and makes the statement that the Dark Knight, or in this case, the Dark Ninja, would have to kill him to end this and wouldn't be able to bring him in alive, even though Batman is able to win without killing him. 3. The fact that Batman gets stabbed in the chest and seemingly falls to his death, only for the movie to then pull a massive fake-out by means of Naruto reference, as the ninja trick that Batman used to dodge the blow that would have killed him is clearly a reference to the replacement jutsu from Naruto. And Batman appears right behind the Joker. And, well, Batman did just say you can't trust everything you see, which could also be an allusion to uh, several of the Genjutsu from the Naruto franchise, no pun intended. Anyways, the villains have been stopped, the day is saved, and the heroes go back to the future. In all fairness, Batman Ninja is definitely, uh, well, it is a superhero anime that definitely deserves a sequel. And with all of this said, now on to the number three selection on my list.